Hey everybody, I'm Chris Wilk, and welcome to Android Authority Q&A, episode number one, for June 5th, 2013. Xion asks, I had the Galaxy S3 from Rogers in Canada, and I'm thinking about switching carriers to Wind. If I unlock the Galaxy S3, will I be able to use it with Wind? Unfortunately, no. Rogers uses GSM technology for their network, while Wind uses UMTS. The S3 that Rogers puts out isn't compatible with UMTS, so even unlocking your phone won't do you any good in this situation. Kevin asks, I'm switching from a Galaxy S3 to an HTC One soon. How can I back up my apps and transfer them to the new device? Well, Kevin, there are a few ways you can do this. First, you can try Google's method. Just go to Settings, then Backup and Reset. Choose to back up your settings there. Now, when you log into your HTC One with your Google account, it'll automatically start downloading all the apps that you used. Unfortunately, that isn't going to actually back up the apps. It just re-downloads them automatically. If you really want to back them up, you can use Helium, which was formerly known as Carbon Backup. That'll allow you to back up to the cloud with a premium version, but if you just want to back up to your PC or an SD card, that'll work fine. With you, you're going to want to back up to a PC because the HTC One doesn't have an SD slot. Hope this helps. Rohit asks, Do you know when Samsung will update the Galaxy S Duos to Jelly Bean? I'm having issues with mine. We have no idea, actually. Samsung did announce that the Galaxy S Duos was going to be getting an upgrade to Jelly Bean, but that was back in September 2012, and we haven't really heard anything since. Now, you mentioned you're having issues. If you want, you can always try running a custom ROM that uses Jelly Bean, but that's beyond the scope of what we can talk about in this video, and as always, it's a little risky. Anacool says, I'm looking for a safe method to route my LG Optimus 2X P990 V30B running ice cream sandwich. I found one method, but it uses NV Flash, which I've never used before. Is there any other reliable method? It looks like you've done your research, and looking around, the main option we found was the all-in-one toolkit available on XDA developers. Now, that'll work with your version, but it does use NV Flash. Luckily, though, it does everything for you, and we've heard reports that it works fairly well. Any other options we found only worked on gingerbread. Amir says, My phone gets hot and starts to slow down. There are a lot of apps running that I don't even use. What can I do? Without knowing what phone or version of Android you're running, it's hard to give you specific advice, but there are a couple general things that might help. For one, try uninstalling apps. Now, if these came pre-installed on your phone, you probably won't be able to get rid of them, but you might be able to disable them and keep them from running. If that doesn't help, there is a last resort option you can try. First, back your phone up, as we talked about a few questions ago. Then go into that same menu, Settings, Backup and Reset, and reset your phone, but again, make sure you're backed up. If this seems to improve performance, just start installing apps that you need one by one, and if you notice performance take a hit, take a look at the app that you installed last. That could be your problem. Ji Yong says, I have 1080p M2TS video files from a Sony HX9V camera that I'm trying to watch on my 7.7 inch dual core Samsung tablet. MX player crashes and BS player works, but the video plays slower than the sound. How can I watch these on my tablet? Now, it sounds like the issue you're having is that the video is too high of a bit rate for your tablet to handle. Now, there's an option that should work for you without having to buy anything. What you want to do is transcode your videos from that fairly unusual format to something that tablets are more used to, like MP4. There's a ton of software that does this, but it's fairly likely that something was included with your camera that might do this right out of the box. Now, while you're transcoding, you might also want to lower the resolution from 1080p to 720p because that's probably the highest your tablet shows anyway on that size of a screen. Jonathan asks, when is the next Nexus device going to be released? Well, you didn't say whether you're talking tablet or phone, so we'll cover both. First, there was a rumor that Asus was going to announce an updated Nexus 7 tablet at this week's Computex, but... Their event came and went without any word of it. 
The event still is going on as I record this, but we still haven't heard anything and it's looking less likely that we will. When it comes to a new Nexus phone, it's even trickier. First, LG said they weren't working on a Nexus 5, but then we heard Larry Page had seen a Nexus 5 prototype from LG in person. For more details on this, see this week's AA Weekly that came out on Sunday. Now, long story short, we'll probably see a new Nexus device soon, but we have no idea when, where, or how. Humphrey says, I work in construction and I need a durable phone. Which phone is more durable, the HTC One or the Samsung Galaxy S4? Now that's a tricky question to answer. The HTC One's aluminum body is more likely to dent, while the S4's polycarbonate body is more likely to scratch. That's not even bringing the glass in to either of these equations. What I would do is leave durability out of it and pick the phone you want based on the features you want, then just get a really tough case. Because if you do that, you're pretty well covered, especially if you use a good screen protector as well. Trey asks, what is the one year warranty on my Galaxy S4 cover? Now, before I answer your question, I just want to say real quick that the protection you get will kind of vary based on your carrier. Now, the Samsung warranty by itself basically covers anything that is Samsung's fault. Say your volume rocker stops working and it's through no fault of your own, your warranty will cover that. Now, say you drop your phone and it breaks, the warranty won't cover that. If you want to get more detail, you probably have a copy of the warranty available to you, given that you own it, and that's where you'll find all the details. Subash asks, how do I import my bookmarks from Google Chrome into the Galaxy S4 stock browser? I'm sorry to say this, but it doesn't look like you can. You're not the only person on the internet who's looked for ways to do this. And as far as I can see, nobody has successfully been able to import their Chrome bookmarks. You're basically going to have to do it manually. Now, if you wanted to go the other way, there are all sorts of ways to import other bookmarks into Chrome. Unfortunately, the other way around just doesn't seem to be possible right now. Todd says, my phone automatically uploads photos to the Instant Upload folder in Google+. Do Instant Upload and Google Drive share the same storage? And if so, what is the purpose of storing photos in my Google Drive account? First things first, yes, Google+, Gmail, and Google Drive all share the same storage. Now, as to why you might want to upload photos to your Google Drive, that's different for everybody. I know I don't. If you do, however, and you don't want Google Plus to instantly up your photos, that's easy to turn off. Just go into Google Plus, then go to Settings, then Camera and Photos, and Auto Backup, and just turn the feature off. Now that won't happen. And that's about all we have for today, folks. If you want a little more detail or some of the links we mentioned, we have a written companion to this video at AndroidAuthority.com. You can find the link down in the description. If you want to ask us some questions of your own, you can also find a link for that in the description. If you just want to stay caught up with what we're doing, make sure to subscribe to our channel. I'm Chris Wook for Android Authority, and as always, thank you for watching.